Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about how to care for older rodents like rats and mice and hamsters. Um, I've had tons of experience with caring for them when they get into their senior years as I rescue a lot of them so I've been through a lot of my mice's you know, lives um, and a lot of them are feeder rodents so they don't have very long lives. Um, except for the ones I have now, which my one rat is four years old um, and my one mouse is three years old, so it's very, very awesome ages for them to be. But anyway, I'm just going to be giving you tips on how to care for them when they get into their older years. I guess the first thing, make sure the cage is very, like, they can get to wherever they need to go without much, like, hassles, if you know what I mean. Like, say, this, if you're familiar with my videos, you know this was my soft furs cage. Um, and I just had that one tunnel and then when I put the two cages together and my mice um, joined my soft furs I had to like add extra tunnels so that my one mouse duck is very old so she, that she can get to where she needs to go I also made all the tunnels angles very easy so that she doesn't have to like in, in case she does end up getting like joint problems with age she doesn't have to like struggle to get where she ever she needs to be um, make sure food and water is very easily accessible. That's a big thing. Um, I, I think you need to make sure that with anything, but you just need to be a bit more aware of it when they get older because now we maybe when they were young and jumpy and springy they could get wherever they needed to be, but as they get older now you've got to like make sure there's like if ladders, if you're not using tunnels or tunnels that are very easy angles or whatever you need to do. This ladder she never uses because it's just at the moment it's just kind of a chew toy for my soft furs. Um, but I mean she can get exactly where she needs to go just by using the tunnels and she does. Okay, so that's the first thing is make sure that everything is very easily accessible. Okay, second thing is um, as they get older I find that sometimes the younger ones decide that okay they have to like make the mark or whatever and they bully the older ones. Not like pain like for blood or whatever but they do like bully them. And that cannot be a very like nice environment for them to live in. So if you've recently put a new one with them, just make sure that they don't pick on the old ones because the old ones can't find ba fight back now because obviously they in their golden years. So that's another tip um, is make sure that they living partners or whatever you want to call them, cage mates, are not bullying them. Okay, um, next tip is warmth. If you live in a very cold country, I don't, luckily. Um, I live in a country where the winter is war as warm as autumn and spring, so it's not very cold here where I am. But you do get cold nights, so when it is cold, make sure they've got bedding. Um, I've given them toilet paper, um, you can give them tissue, whatever that type of stuff. It's all shoved into that little house. Is that... No, I thought I saw paper in the camera. Um, but yeah, so like lots of bedding. I give them paper. Um, I've mentioned in my other videos why I don't give them sawdust because they only sell pine sawdust where I live and I know it's very bad for them. Um, boxes, they're very good for insulating warmth. So that's uh, definitely something you can use. Hay, um, fabric is preferable. But I mean, I give them fabric, but it's all probably stuffed in this little red house now. They really like fabric. But you don't want to use the fabric that like um, kind of what's the word it kind of goes off into like you know those little stringy parts and then you end up getting them like caught in the strings or saying you don't want that polo fleece is what i would recommend the type of fabric you use okay so that's the third tip which is just make sure that they're warm um i doubt they'll ever freeze to death but i mean if you're old and you like your you're very sore your joints are sore and it's cold that's just going to worsen the pain so that is another thing like i said is warmth um i'm going to show you dietary um, in the next part. I'm doing my video in sections. Um, it's just easier. I'll probably upload it like um, part one, two and three. I'm not sure. I'm just to see how long it comes out to be because it might be too long to upload as one big video. Okay, so I think that's basically all the tips. Um, oh, and another thing is just because they're all now, that doesn't mean they don't run on their wheels. My one still runs on her wheel. She doesn't run as much as she was young as when she was younger, but she still does. So don't think now, okay, my one's too old, rats or whatever is too old. They don't run on their wheel anymore. They're nocturnal, so you probably won't see them running on their wheel. But don't take their wheel out now just because they've gotten older. Um, I can't really think of much else. It doesn't really. They don't really need too much extra care when they're older. Um, don't pick them up. 
in any way that could hurt them especially like by a leg or whatever because when they get older they might have that if you are if you have pet rats or mice that are feeder rats or mice um be aware that one of the most common things i find except for respiratory problems is um tumors that grow in like their stomachs i've had that on three occasions so if you start picking them up and they start squeaking it's probably that i have a rat that um you'll probably see near the end of the video i'm going to be showing my rats um but she has i think she's got that at the moment but I might be taking her to the vet, but the vets are like, uh, yeah, I, they're not very good. They they don't really treat um, rodents. They got two methods for how to treat a rodent. You either put it down or you let them live with it. I don't know why, but the vets yeah, obviously didn't study to care for like hamsters and stuff. And they charge the same that they would if they were um, like doing it for a dog or whatever. So it's very expensive for not much help. Um, so yeah, so that's basically it. If you live in a place that has, um, I live in a very small town, so you know it's not like the vets are bad. It's just that the vets that I do have aren't very good with um, that specific category of animals. But anyway, so the next part of the video you'll see now is going to be um, my homemade food for older rodents or mice or whatever you want to call it. Okay, them. so this is my rodent food recipe for rodents that are either very old or have a illness that causes them to lose weight. Um, I had a hamster that was very old and he eventually died of old age. I think he was like three and a half years old, something like that. So he was quite old. Um, but as he got older, he started to lose a lot of weight. So I kind of made this recipe up to kind of get him to gain weight again. And then I have a rat currently that suffers from a respiratory problem. Um, and she's already on medication for it, but she still loses a lot of weight from it. So this is also very good for her. Uh, and if you have, say you've got one rat, like I have one rat that's sick, but she's living with all the other rats because it's not a contagious disease. All of them can eat this. It's not going to do much. It'll may Maybe it'll let them gain a little bit of weight, but they ran it off so quickly. It's not a big deal. Okay, so first of all, what you'll need is any type of porridge that makes this consistency like that type of consistency. Um, as long as it doesn't have any like sugars, I mean, this is bland, this is wheat, whole wheat, I mean, not very like, you know, sugary, if you know what I mean. Um, so any type of bland porridge that makes that, that like I said, doesn't, isn't flavored um, with like sugar or chocolate or whatever, you know, like that type of stuff. So a bland porridge that makes that consistency. Um, and then I also use this, which is like a, this is the type of porridge you have to cook. But I don't cook it, uh, but well, I use it because I find that it gives the like the uh, uh, end result food, if you want to call it that, more of like a long lasting like type of thing. So if I leave it in the cage for like a few hours, it's not going to go like bad. So they, if they don't eat it straight away, it's fine. So I use that for that reason, and this I just use because it's very filling, and obviously you need like uh, like the base of the like recipe. So that's what that is, and then. Um, if you do have the money and you can, the porridge I would recommend instead of using this one is, I think the name is Future Life. I don't know if you have it where you live, but I stopped buying it because it got too expensive for me. But that was definitely the best type of porridge you can use. Um, Future Life is supposed to like be very incredibly healthy for people, so you can imagine how healthy it is for little rodents. So yeah, or any type of porridge that is very similar to that. Maybe Google Future Life and then you can see the type of ingredients it has and maybe you have a porridge that is very similar to that one. So yeah, I'm substituting it with this. It's Herbal Life or whatever. Um, and it's also like a healthy meal shake type thing. So that'll work just as well um, as uh, the Future Life stuff. So this you can get from the chemist. It's not that badly expensive. And I mean, I've had this for like Sorry, I can't get the lid open. Yeah, okay, hold on quickly. Okay, so yeah, you see, I've, I mean, this I've had, I think I've had it for two months now, maybe more, and I mean, I've only used that much. Now, that's not a lot, considering that um, I make it almost every day. So, yeah, so anything that, you can go look in the canvas, anything that's like, um, for people that are like, just got out of operation or whatever, so they can't eat whole food, like that type of stuff, it's very good. So that's the, probably one of the main ingredients, like, um, you know what I mean. 
And anyway, and then um, oats. I put in oats. This is um, banana flavored, so it can't harm them. But I just put this in with the porridge because it, it gets, um, when it soaks up the water, it gets very soft and it's just like it's more filling for them. Okay, then the next big ingredient is mayonnaise. Very fattening. Um, I mean, you've seen people that eat long mayonnaise, they probably are quite fat. Uh, anyway, so that's, um, it's also very fattening for rodents. And it's, it's not, it won't harm them. I wouldn't try to give it to a mouse because I said like they are lactose intolerant. But um, my hamster had it, my rats have it no issues um so yeah so that is definitely um one of the things that is one of the bigger ingredients and then i've just got this here to represent honey it's syrup but i'm not going to use syrup because it's, it's very high in sugar and it's bad for them but i've just got it here to represent honey so you guys can see what all the ingredients you need and then butter but like really like good like actual butter not like margarine or any of that ripple stuff okay so those are all your ingredients um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause throughout the video and show you each step by step as I'm making it because I have to do this one handed and I can't do it one handed so yeah. Okay so I've just added the Pinutro and the sorry Tasty Wheat so I mean I didn't add a lot because you can't leave it for very long without it going off so you don't want to make a lot and this is for um, two of my rats but the other two rats that I have, I have four rats in total and my one rat's very old, she's four years old and my other rat, like I said, is suffering from a respiratory problem but my other two rats are perfectly healthy but they don't gain weight from this because they, they're like very active so they get it off but you can still see how little I use um, so you don't want to make too much, you want to make too little because you don't want to end up wasting your stuff now because you made too much and it went off okay so that's the first step Okay, next is just about a half a scoop, maybe even a little less. You don't really have to overdo it, like a quarter scoop. Um, that I find is more than enough. Um, and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, now I've just added the oats. Um, and I've only put like three, four teaspoons, like heaped teaspoons. If you make too much, you can refrigerate it. It's, it will still be fine, but it, you can't do it for more than a few days before it goes like awful, very hard. So yeah. Okay, so I've put about one and a half, two teaspoons of mayonnaise, not heaped. You don't want to overdo the mayonnaise, and then I just put like a wedge of butter. It's like not only that much. So it does seem like a lot, but this is, I mean, I'll show you my rat in another video. Um, I actually, I'll probably show you at the end of this video. But um, yeah, you'll see why I have to make it so high in fat. And now all you do is you add some water and mix it to the consistency that I'll show you in the next part. So that's basically your end result. Sorry if you can hear the bird in the background. But that's basically the end result. Um, you don't want it too runny, but you don't want it too thick. If it's one of those porridges that like just like go hard within quite a quick amount of time, then just continuously keep adding water until you get the consistency right. So yeah, so that's basically um, the type of food that I make. I didn't add honey in this video, but I normally add honey. I normally add about a half a teaspoon, a teaspoon, it depends. Um, honey is very good for them, so it can't do any harm. So yeah, so the next part of the video now, I'll be showing you um, them eating this, and I'll show you my rats that I have that I am feeding this to.